Hello, everybody, and welcome to the White Hatter YouTube News Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm Darren. Let's get into some news topics, shall we? In the news. First news topic of interest from last week was yeah, uh, actually an article from Washington Post yeah. talking about how esports stars can have a shorter career than NFL players. Yeah, this was an interesting one that I wanted to talk about. I read the article. It was a really cool article. You, you actually hear teens a lot when we're when we're doing presentation talking about how they want to be esports e stars because esport is a thing. It's big business right yeah. now, right? Like you look at that teen here in Canada a couple of years ago who placed third in the World Fortnite competition. He walked away with one. 1.2 million dollars in his pocket right sure. but i mean becoming a professional esport player is just as difficult as becoming a professional nfl nba you know uh baseball it's just as hard if not harder but what was interesting about this article was they talked about the average age of young people becoming an esport professional player is in your early 20s yep and most are now retiring out of esports around mid to late 20s. And that doesn't mean you've made so much money you can retire no. early. It means now you have to maybe look at something different. If Correct. And and the difference is they're kind of picking on us boomers, right? The older people is that your reaction speed decreases as you get older, memory, you know, there's all kinds of issues going on there, uh, as well as repetitive usage injuries, right? With respect to like tunnel carpal and all that yeah, kind of stuff. I so guess there could be it was a lot interesting. more brain, potential brain power in esports than say just beating somebody up on a football field. <laughs> you know, it was very interesting because, you know, <laughs> There, there are people who are pushing back going, well, hold on a second here. Show me the good evidence-based peer-reviewed research that shows that, you know, somebody in their 30s doesn't have the same reaction time as somebody in their early 20s. Well, there has been a lot of research that has showed that. Prove it. Where is it? Show I it to me. I will have to go and <laughs> produce that. But, th that, that but was, those you are... know your neurons do deteriorate after, sure. after 30. For sure. And that's what they're basing the science off, yeah, I that, would assume. It was, it, was, it was quite an interesting article. But I, I think the takeaway, especially for youth, is that, you know, and parents, eSport is... A big thing. It is big business right now, and there's money to be made in it, no yep. doubt. But, you know, to become a professional esport player is quite difficult to do. And once in, your career is not as long as you think it's going to be, and you're not making as much money. I think in the article they talk about that the average takeaway is is less than a half a million dollars, right, for a lot of these people who retire out of the sport. Right. Now, you know, half a million dollars when you're 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 years old is a, is a good amount of money. But what happens after? In fact, they bring to light a couple of really good ones where some esport, very famous esport people who were involved in the esports have now retired. But they were smart enough to go, you know what? I still need to make money when yep. I leave here. So they started up their own companies now where they're selling like esport paraphernalia, paraphernalia or being team leaders correct. managers coaches correct uh, yeah, or, yeah 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 more general content creators yeah 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 yeah, yeah. To yeah. reach to a wider audience exactly. so i guess you know exactly for those young people who are interested in such career yeah you know, think about your future opportunities yeah. beyond again you pursue the career if that's what you for really sure. want to do for sure and if you are successful there think about what your exit strategy is going to be exactly and it's not going anywhere like toronto right now is building a, like a 500 million dollar e-gaming stadium yeah, in toronto in that is specifically designed that people can come in and just watch it's a particip participatory sport yep. right so very interesting article though yes definitely what's up what else? Apple oh. USB-C iPhones seem Careful, closer I'm an, I'm, I'm an iPhone. than ever after new EU vote on charging standards. So the European Union is looking at having some standardized charging port uh, laws to make devices not become proprietary on each little okay. port and dongle. So on the iPhone right now, it's what it's a lightning port, right? Apple lightning port, yes. So what's the difference between a lightning port and a USB-C port for those people who are watching, like parents that don't know? The easiest way to say it is the physical form of the port. So uh, lightning's flat, USB-C is more of a circle. Right, but Oval. is there a performance difference there between can the be. two? Well, USB-C is much newer and is technically in how you program it more faster especially with lightning integration or sorry uh thunderbolt integration okay um you lightning came out in the usb 2.0 era right. and it is was shown to be more faster and stable yeah, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah, but yeah. now there is better technology but apple is just clinging on to that U, usb lightning adapter and the reason they do that is because and correct me if i'm wrong 
in order to dongle this or connect this to something else, you need a specific Apple dongle now to do that. Whereas if you go USB-C, it's kind of, you can plug any USB-C into it, right? Is that the issue? It all comes down to money, yeah, money, money, yeah, money, for sure, money. For sure. Uh, yeah, so like for people, I believe, uh, if people who want to manufacture Apple dongles have to, I believe, if I recall correctly, pay, it's Apple's, IP. Yeah, they're so they probably paying a licensing yeah. a licensing fee to yeah. use it. So yeah. 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 if Apple goes USB C, they're potentially losing that <laughs> yeah. revenue stream. So yeah. they are, even though it's slower, they are clinging on to it. And I mean, the challenge is that you know, for people who have like their the lightning is slower. Yeah, lightning slower. What's people, presently there now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but for people who want to like upgrade, like if Apple does change to USB C, right? If you have like one of those alarm clocks that plug into the side of your bed, yep. That have the lightning yep. adapter, yeah, 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 yeah. you have to get a new one, right? Uh, so yeah, yeah, Apple yeah, yeah, users yeah, yeah. who have all these other dongles and accessories will have to change it <laughs> if they upgrade. But at least the changes opens you up to a much wider market of potentially cheaper. <laughs> That's the thing, right? Dongles, right. which again, Apple doesn't want. Apple wants to hold on. Like the iPad Pro has USB C. Yeah. So. It is doable. Yeah, for sure. But for some reason, because I guess what the pro users want to spend could spend more money on proper dongles, I guess. Yeah. You know, I don't. Yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting. Right. But there's no doubt. Yeah. Do, do I think they should do it? Yeah, I do. I, I think it is. They might be legally required in the EU. And if that happens. Yeah. Well, why would Apple make two manufacturing processes yeah, two for different two phones. different iPhones? That the, makes no sense. The, no. So if it happens in the EU, we could hope. In the North American you know, markets. Tip of my white hat to the EU, right? Because a lot of the changes that are happening in the industry, be it hardware, software, or whatever it is, it's all because of what's going on in the EU, EU uh, with regards to legalities and court challenges, you know, privacy issues. It's because of what they're, it's not what's going on in North America, right? It really <laughs> no. isn't. It's because of what the, the EU is doing. And again, tip of my white hat. I do think that it would be a benefit to the end user, us, to go with the USB-C because it gives us more options to buy things that are going to be cheaper than Apple proprietary uh, things like dongles and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Again, it would be a, in Apple's best interest. If they legally have to do that in the EU, they might as well standardize that across yeah. the board instead of having manufacturing for it'd be interesting to watch how this court case evolves right uh yeah, or it, vote sorry it, it's vote. a vote so right only two members of their parliament have voted against this the rest were like i wonder if they got shares in apple <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah because i'm pretty sure i i bet most i bet most because a lot of tech things like government people have don't know what they're talking about yeah, yeah. but i bet most of those members of parliament have an iphone and they're like yeah this yeah. lightning thing sucks. Yeah, yeah. We're going to make a law to change this. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> they probably have their own lived experience. And I'm an Apple fanboy, as you know, right? Yeah. Like, I, I really am. But I think on this issue, I think it would be in their best interest to just go with USB-C, right? And I think they've already, like you said, on the new uh, iPad Pro, they've got one anyway. So it's there. It can be done. What they're going to do, they're going to announce it on stage at one of their events. Yeah. And they're going to make this, this whole world hey, hey, changing hey, hey, thing. Hey, hey, easy. It's one of my favorite things to watch on TV. And then, and, and guess what? Android has had that for oh, years. Yeah. But it's going to be this brand new thing. They're going to be like, and now the iPhone, USB-C. <laughs> People are going to go, yeah, woo! Fireworks. And it's going to be like, oh, really? Having said that, I still love my iPhone, right? I, I really do. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's going to be a huge thing. They'll make a whole deal of it. And it's going to be like, oh, good, whatever. Can't wait to... Whatever. I love the Apple events. You know, everybody else is trying to do what Apple started with these Apple events, yeah. right? It, it, last, when, when you're the leader, everybody wants to be the follower. The last few Apple software updates have been complete ripoffs of what Android has been doing for oh, years. Whatever. So, I mean. Whatever. As you can tell, I'm an Apple fanboy. Mm -hmm. Next one. Uh, next article. Well, I guess three <laughs> articles which all surround oh, yeah, they, Netflix. Netflix. They got beat up last week, man. Netflix has had quite the week. So uh, the main talking point was Netflix reported a loss of 200,000 subscribers, and they blame password sharing as a factor. Mm, no. I mean, and nice, nice gaslighting, in my opinion. It, there's definitely an issue going on there, but... I mean, I think they said that their their stock took like a forty five billion dollar hit. 
so as a result of so this, right? I, definitely, like, definitely was, I don't know how big of the it B was, billions. It was huge. But I do know there were some billions involved in the loss. Now, in regards to password sharing, some further research and articles <laughs> pro, uh, found that about, uh, from this article, about 2.3... That popcorn password. makes me hungry. I know, right? <laughs> um, password are shared with about 2.3 people living outside a household. And 79% of users who is using someone else's password have reported that they will not pay for their own account if Netflix somehow restricts password sharing. And then 28.8% of Netflix watchers do it illegally through like ripping and pirate piracy software. You know, should, should this really surprise Netflix that this was going on? Like, come on, right? Like they knew it was going on. See, here's the challenge, right? I, you know, this whole streaming philosophy, everybody wanted to be first to market on, and Netflix was the leader on this, right? Now others are coming on board like Apple and Prime and everybody else with regards to just streaming. But, you know, everybody wants to be the first to market and they're not thinking about issues down the road because they want to be first, right? Well, they were well, first. They were, but now what's happening is the market is now pushing back, right? And I think because of that, it's it their their prediction they rolled the dice to think that this market was going to be huge right and i think what we've now are seeing is that the market has maybe reached a point where it's reached its apex right but really it can't grow much more i think i uh, yeah I, I agree the market there's a lot of people who are streaming but i think people have different options now right yes everyone yeah. every yeah, company yeah, yeah, yeah. that too is, is getting into the streaming market we have to pay them directly for their own content but those who are now paying for the streaming some of those companies are now backing up good example cnn plus right their their premium streaming paid for platform Warner Brothers, who took over CNN as the parent company now, have basically come in and said, they're axing it. And they're, no they're, one was going to ever pay for CNN. Well, Plus. no, they had over 150,000 subscribers on it, right? They, they, who are already Actually, paying for it. Yeah, no, really, 150,000 subscribers on it right now. But when they did the math, it just, you know, and they knew that there was going to be a huge burn rate. And the whole goal was over 10 years from 10 years from now, it would be cost neutral that they would be making money, right? But, you know, they, they put in, I think it was like $600 million into this. And so Warner Brothers has basically, come in and revisited this and then said listen we're nuking this because the likelihood of this becoming cost neutral or cost benefit to us down the road is very unlikely look as this is an example so they've nuked it Net uh, yeah. cnn's probably just better off doing proprietary youtube shows yeah it's 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 very interesting right no that's our gig <laughs> yeah yeah that's true so i think what you're going to see happening and this might be a new segue into the next next uh the next thing you're going to show up here is right so the, this the, one, the right? other reported yeah. story was netflix plans to offer a cheaper ad supported subscription tier so they yeah. so you have the current three tiers right now and then they have a cheaper one where ads would be supported in order to make up for that differential in price i think you know now you were telling me like Hulu does this. And... Hulu and HBO right now have a ad supported tier. Right. Now I can't really talk about those because I don't have those right. services. Right. Um, I just hope that if they decide to do this, that you're not watching a Netflix movie and then all of a sudden, boop, an ad pops up in the middle I of the movie, right? Like, I think that would be how that works. I would, again, I, I'm assuming they would follow the steps as Hulu and HBO. I mean, let us know in the comments if yeah. you have one of those tiers. Um, but I do believe from what I re recall that they're like before and yeah. after. So it's kind of like when you're sitting in a movie, th traditional movie theater, right? <laughs> Whatever those are nowadays. But um, where before the movie starts, you get bombarded with all these advertisements in the pre-show. And then once the movie starts, there's no more advertisements, right? Yeah, or if you're binge watching a TV series, right. so between each episode, you get an ad placement. Yeah. I think, you know, what's going on with Netflix, they were first to market, but now you got people like Disney Plus, you got Prime Plus, you got all these others coming to market right now that are offering, in a way, maybe a superior product in shows now that as a result of that, people are going and looking at Netflix and going, you know, why would I want to stay with Netflix when I can go with Apple or Prime or some of these other ones and get the same type of programs where I want at a cheaper price? I, so a couple things on that, I think. Well, one, people have been criticizing Netflix's content. Yeah. That maybe Netflix is going as, as, as instead of quality, looking at quantity. Yeah. And maybe they have to look back at quality because they are 
publishing a lot of bottom tier, sometimes garbage content. Yeah, for sure. So just for the sake of having something. So maybe they need to reevaluate their income and redistribute their resources in more quality content. Yeah. And in addition, I have seen some online users, what they do is because it's a month to month subscription, right? Yep. One month Netflix, one month Disney Plus, one month something else. <laughs> so people just hop between. <laughs> Because you can cancel your subscription anytime. At any time. Yeah. So again, I mean, unless there's a show like you really need to watch day one. Yeah. But generally, a lot of people can sometimes just wait. So I have seen some talks. People just switch. Your mom's like that. There's constantly there's shows coming on that I want to watch a movie that are at the theaters, and she'll go, "Let's just wait because it'll be on Apple or it'll be on Netflix within a month or two months, and we can watch it then for free." And she's right. But I'm the type of guy that. I know. I want to watch it now. You are very impulsive. I know. I know. I know. I know. But, yeah, true. I am. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I am. Yeah. So. <laughs> but, that, I mean, it. I think what's happening here is the market is now speaking, right? Like, Netflix first to market. They were the biggest, right? But now I like, and again, I watched a number of shows on this that I think what they have found is that they've reached their apex. I think their growth is kind of topped out now. And as a result of that, with all the other competition that's coming in, it's starting to decline. That's why they're getting hit. Yeah. So that's I don't just think it's because people are stealing and hacking and, you know, sharing passwords. That's a part well, of it. But again, if Netflix can get people who are using someone else's password to pay, then that would increase the revenue. Yeah. The challenge challenge that Netflix has is how they're going to do that. Yeah. Because from my tech experience, the only way to do that is they would have to look at an IP address. So right. people in the same household make sense. Right. So if you have two households with two different internet service providers, yeah. you Netflix would be able to see that. Yeah. But how does Netflix handle travelers? I mean, I'm even, and you know this, right? Like we, we still have cable. Right. And I know you look at me and go, what? Because you don't. But I mean, I'm even revisiting now, looking at even maybe getting rid of our cable subscription and just sticking with, you know, Apple, Netflix, Prime, whatever we have. Uh, because a lot of these system, a lot of these vendors now still allow you to access local television if you want for sure. local news. I mean, primarily we still keep our cable because it allows me to watch things like I'm a news hound, as you know, like CNN and MSNBC, uh, local news. So, but a lot of these platforms now, like Netflix and Prime, allow you to get subscriptions to those yeah, as well. So I'm it may be cheaper in the long run to do that. Uh, Canadian Global News is available on yeah. Prime directly yeah. without any extra cost. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah. that, that does make sense. It's interesting, right? It's just that for those people that are non-techie, uh, going with a cable uh, option is just easier, right? It's just easier. But anyways, things things that we're looking at. Um, but it's interesting how the market is pushing back for sure. Yeah, I honestly don't know how Netflix is going to handle password no. sharers because people who travel a lot who have different IP addresses and whenever yeah. they go, is Netflix then going to cancel your subscription? Or what because... about somebody who's using a VPN for a privacy standpoint, right? Well, now what? Yeah, true. There's going to be a lot of false positives that uh... Netflix will have to have staff available to yeah. walk through and deal with that. Yeah. So is that worth the headache? Yeah. Uh, uh, right? Yeah, no, for sure. Good show. Yeah. Good show. Yeah, good show. Poor Netflix. Poor Netflix. Uh, maybe it's not the unicorn that it was once used to be, right? So, well, and by yet. the way, we we watched this. Um, we watched the um, uh, the show called uh, the Me Too, or or not Me Too, uh, Me. Uh, the whole th the whole. It was a uni uh, show about a unicorn who created this app called Me or we, sorry, and yeah, the we, yeah, it's called we, and how, you know, he crashed and burned, right? Mm. It was amazing. Well, maybe Netflix, who was the unicorn in this industry, is now kind of going, oh, oh. Well, Netflix destroyed Blockbuster, so yeah. now maybe Disney Plus and the others are destroying Netflix. Yeah, for uh, Blockbusters. Boy, there's a flash from the past. I know, right? <laughs> right? I used to love going in the Blockbuster. Right, going on down the rows and looking at all the things, and then going in and going, can I get this? And there's none available. I mean, it was kind of cool, right? Blockbusters was kind of cool when it first came that out. That sounds labor intensive. Oh, listen to this coming from millennial. You know, there's something about going into a place sometimes and touching it and looking at it, and you know, reading the back of the box and 
doing stuff like that. That takes so much time, though. Oh, God, millennials. <sighs> Anyways, I'm Darren. And Brandon, thank you all so much, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>